But anyway, we got a good episode for you today. Um, today we're going to make it, it's going to be a shorter episode, uh, but want to cover a couple things. Number one, um, there is a term inside the Reddit group, Wall Street Bets. They have a whole bunch of their own terminology, which I think is awesome. <clears throat> they have things like diamond hands and tendies and things like that. But one of them is that you really under, need to understand in general is a term called a bag holder. And what it means is when you do a short squeeze, or really anytime the stock price goes up a ton, you have to understand that the last person holding the stock is going to hold the bag and it's the bag's full of poo basically you do not want to be the last one holding it on so you need to get out of the market before the big drop happens because it always happens with a short squeeze and if a stock you know is going on is increasing on momentum as opposed to fundamentals it'll happen as well so with that being said we took uh, some profits today. So number one, Signet Jewelers, which was our number one producer. It's sitting here at 550% profit, which means if we bought it for 100, we sold it for 650 basically, 649.85. And you know, it was intended, if we looked, I think we talked about this yesterday, we looked at Signet was slated to be a 341% increase but it's actually at 549. So we took our profit on that. Uh, we didn't sell all of it. We sold 100 of the 166 shares. So we still have other ones. We want to let it ride a little bit. Uh, Vine Therapeutics, again, it was up. It did its job. It had its spike. It had its new drug passed. And that's really the idea of, you know, when we have a biotech company, we want to get that spike and sell it. So I uh, sold it at 270. And of course, it dropped down to 258. So that was looking like a really wise decision. So we freed up about seven grand there um so that's really great also we had iheart come in we uh of the limit buys we did yesterday these are all the ones that we had as of yesterday iheart radio came in at 1375 we bought it low it popped up to 1400 14 dollars. so that is a really good sign for that one so from iheart we have basically a whole bunch of other ones we have but since we have more money to play with we have seven grand more much more money to reinvest uh, we decided to add some more into AHT. This is our Ashford Hospitality Trust. They do hotels and casinos. We have about five grand invested. You know, for, surprisingly, it's a sister stock of Bramer Resorts, and Bramer Resorts is killing it. Uh, but this one has a big upside on it right now. It currently has an upside of where is it? An upside of nine point three eight. So definitely want to look at increasing what we do in there. So. Uh, we decided to add another 500 shares into there, basically 1300 bucks. Not a huge amount, but we're going to put the price point at the same point that we currently own it at. So it's currently at 273. If it drops down to 255, we'll buy it again. That way we don't raise our cost, our bit, our uh, cost basis. And it'll be a 10% upside if we get there. Uh, if it goes up, we don't buy it. No big deal. You know, we have a good amount of money in there. We'll just take the gain on it. Um, Texas Hospitality, again, they do, we talked a lot about them. They do um, food service and accommodations for oil workers in the Permian Basin. Um, and that's really good. If you look at a lot of the Biden thing where he's doing with the oil, it shouldn't really affect Texas too much because that's typically on private land in Texas. So it's currently at 188. We sold it at one, I think 190 before when we had it. Um, so if it goes down to 155, we'll get it. I'm not super eager to get it. It hasn't really jumped a whole lot, but it's a nice one to have if we can get it down there. And part part of it was looking at, we looked at our upside and it was one of the ones near the top. So I thought, all right, it's worth taking a look at. Um, and then Corsair, I was actually updating the buy ratings. So if we look at, oh, we don't, yeah. The look at the buy ratings on here, I was updating them. And Corsair, actually, I don't think it had a buy rating before, but I looked at it now, and they're giving it an 89% buy, buy rating. So I looked at Corsair. We only have 1500 bucks in it. It's a little bit negative. It's about break even. So um, currently, we have it at 39.20. So I figured if we can get in and get it at 35, then we'll lower our cost basis. And I may adjust this, but... Um, you know, it's a good point to where we want to, you know, a good stock that we want to have it. I might raise it up a little bit. We'll see as things go on. But today was a gain day. So we're looking at, you know, a gain day. So we don't necessarily want to be eager on, 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 you know, giving, giving yourself a better opportunity to get the stock 
based on the price it is now, we want to take a day where the market takes a bath and then take a look at the prices and decide where we want to have it. So this one leaves, you know, kind of a big gap that we want it to, to bridge before we're going to buy it again. Um, but if we do buy it, we'll add another 2,600 to it. So it gives us a ton of new blood in there. Um, but we took some gains today. We're reinvesting them. And overall, it leaves us at a point where we're at an overall gain from what we initially bought it at of close to 300%, which is basically quadrupling our investment, which is a beautiful thing. And if we sold our entire portfolio today, we would gain about 100, it says 129.8, uh, but we're a little bit above that. We gain 130,000 on there, um, which is a great thing. Again, it's law school tuition. And when we get done with this, it will also be um, down payment for a home. The beach house, as we talk about. Um, all right, so a couple other things and we'll get out of here. Number one, um, you gotta be careful when you're investing that you pick the right stock. And I don't mean like choosing the right stock and is it the right one to get, does it have upside? I mean, actually picking and uh, like the right stock and, and you don't wanna buy the wrong stock. So for example, Elon Musk tweets for an app called Clubhouse, right? And everybody went, oh my gosh, Elon Musk tweet about it, must be the next big thing. And so Clubhouse Media Group, which is something totally different went up 117%. But the privately owned Clubhouse app has nothing to do with Clubhouse Media. So they actually bought the wrong app. It went up and they better have taken their gain on it and left because they just it was, it was a case of misidentification. And then additionally, um, there was a company called Forward Air Industries and they basically do, I, was, I saw this in my email earlier, um, that price spiked sharply following a midday press release from Ford when it will accelerate development of um, a connected vehicle experience with Google. So that went up and everybody went, oh my gosh, I got to go buy Ford. So they looked for the ticker Ford and they go, oh, that must be Ford. And they didn't bother to look and see that it's Forward Air Industries. But Ford is Ford Motor Company. It's just F. So they bought the wrong stock. So don't be dumb. Don't be stupid. Um, you know, and again, get yourself set up. As far as tomorrow, it's early on, basically break even. We have trending up a little bit, um, but things are moving in the right direction. The market went up really nicely today and our portfolio went up nicely today. So overall, we had a gain of about 3,500, um, you know, based on where things are at. So with that being said, get your portfolio in order. If you have any questions on individual stocks, let me know. Any questions about themes overall, let me know. Um, as far as the GameStop thing going on, Robinhood still has limits on the purchases of GameStop. So I don't think it's over until they release those out. I still think there's people that want to buy those stocks, drive the price up, and make their gain on it. Um, but while the, anytime you have artificially induced limits on a market, then you know you're not really seeing what's going on, and I, and I actually saw this thing on TV. They were talking about like how most people are when they talk about the fundamentals of the market. You look at fundamentals and it drives the market. But it's interesting. One of the things they didn't really talk about, which I kind of figured when I was watching it, is is the retail, the amount of people going in with speculative trading in the last year, the volume of which is so high that normally in a normal market when there's a little there's a small amount of speculation and most people are doing long-term fundamental trading the fundamentals drive the market so in other words if all of a sudden they beat earning x earnings estimate or an analyst upgrades their um, status for a stock the stock price goes up and again if they if they miss earning estimates then the stock goes down but with the market as it is right now where people basically aren't working they have free money to spend because the government's given some money and um, they're just deciding to put it in the market because there's really no other place to put it. Wherever the momentum is, is what's driving the stock. And it's not so much fundamental. So you could have a stock that has a great earnings report today and the stock goes down. It's because that's not what's really driving the market. It's a fact that the retail investors have come in with such volume that the movements that they make, especially if they coordinate in chat rooms, um, is gonna more dictate the price of the stock than fundamentals. So again, we've covered that a little bit in kind of what we're doing here. But um, with that being said, market's still looking to go, you know, we'll see where it goes. Have a plan. If the market goes up, then you're gonna take your gain right here. And if the market goes down, you wanna have some opportunities to take advantage of buying the dip. So with that being said, uh, last thing, 
we are slated right now to be at about 365,000 and it's moving in the right direction. And I went from having a, let's see. So, and one last thing I went from having um, basically a margin where I was at a margin of using probably in the mid 20s. So I'm at about 15,000 right now. So again, you want to spend as much of that as possible and get these limit orders in. And if they go down, it's only because the market took a bath today. Um, but if the market goes up, don't be sad. Don't be, you know, don't feel like you need to fill these orders. You only want to fill these orders on a day when the market goes down. And generally I have a 10% rule. So if the stock's at hundred, I'm only going to say, I generally don't set the limit order price under or over 90. I want to see it take a tough, tough day. Um, that way it takes all of the risk out of it. And then when it rebounds, which it usually does, then you get that gain. So with that being said, uh, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow and we'll get you up to date. To get more information on the sales cheat code, go ahead and click on the subscribe button below. Also down below in the video description, you know, down there, there's a link that takes you to our website. It gives you additional content, some additional freebies that we have, and gives you information on some programs that we have that have been proven to help people to make sales easy so that you can make the kind of money you want, live the lifestyle that you've always wanted, and not have to struggle in the process. And what might be the coolest thing of all is you don't have to put much effort into it. It truly is a cheat code that most people don't know about. And it's a cheat code that can change your life today. So click on the link below and let me help you start to experience these results starting right now.